What is up, family? It's your boy D coming right back at you with another one. Right now, we're back in the lab, and a demo is on the menu. What is up, family? I'd like to welcome you guys to the bedroom. Well, that sounds a little weird, but um, I like to, in terms of audio video equipment, I like to welcome you guys to my bedroom. Okay, so what do we have here? In the middle is a 7.2 surround sound system that I, or audio video receiver that I purchased from, um, I believe, Newegg about uh, roughly over eight months ago or somewhere in that ballpark. I do not remember how much I paid for it. I do know that it was um, around 300 bucks is the budget that I set for a good audio video receiver. And this is the one that I stumbled up upon. I stumbled upon. It had everything that I was looking for in it. If you guys are wondering the name of it, the name of it is the Pioneer uh, VSX 932 just the VSX 932 and like I said I wanted something that, that had wireless capabilities I wanted something that was 7.2 it gave me that bandwidth as far as like me being able to do Dolby Atmos and things of that nature this is Dolby Atmos compatible and as you guys can see from the labeling on the front which I haven't removed yet it does a whole bunch of other things including 4K HDR pass through, it has the uh, Chromecast built in, it has a whole lot of stuff that it actually does. But this video is really not going to even be about the receiver itself or the Bluetooth player over here by Sony. Maybe I can do some individual um, uh, demos of, the, of these things later or reviews I should say of these things later. But for right now, what I'd like to draw you guys' attention to is not the, the, the rat nest of wires that you see sprawled across my floor here. That is not what I'm talking about either. The star of this, of this episode on the Budget Basehead channel is actually going to be this guy here. Yeah, I know you guys have already been introduced to this on the channel. This is the Dayton Audio SPA 250. This is a 250 uh, watt RMS amplifier and it has served me well. This thing puts out pretty good power and I love it when paired with my 8 inch uh, reference HF series uh, Dayton Audio subwoofer. So both these units are from Dayton Audio. As you can see down here I got pretty much the identical setup over here and that's pretty much what I want to bring to you guys attention. Doing my initial review of the SPA 250 there was a feature here that I did not really go in depth in or that I did not go into well enough and that is the strapping feature of the SPA 250 okay yes that is true you heard me right this little amplifier well it's not a little amplifier it's quite heavy to be honest with you for only being 250 watt but most of that has to do with that massive heat sink that you see right there on the front of it and if I can hit it at an angle you guys can kind of see just how much that thing the uh, the heat sink itself sticks out the heat sink uh, I would say protrudes outward about two inches maybe an inch and a half two inches more than an inch and a half I would say it protrudes outward so those fins are, are it, they, they do their job when it comes to dissipating heat um, which is what it's supposed to do but uh, the strapping feature. So, uh, for you, for those of you who do not know what strapping means, it's simply simply put, it means that you can connect the output. I mean, you can share the input of this amplifier, which is coming from that receiver. The back of that receiver has a left and right channel just for subs. It's not a powered output. It's just a low uh, a low voltage output for subwoofers have a left and right channel you can send that outwards to here and this here receives it on 
the uh, low level input that's the side that you would would receive that uh, from your amplifier or from your receiver in this case it will go into the input terminals there the RCAs and what it would do is it would send that power to your subwoofer which I have these bare cables I just simply twist them together because I'm trying to get my uh, my uh, my system sounding exactly the way I want it and right now nothing is permanent so that's why you got this rat nest of, of wire sprawled everywhere and bare metal exposed metal like that as far as in the wiring but um, what you have going on here is if you look to the left of the low level input you also have a low level output so what is the purpose of this the purpose of this is so that you can share the input signal you can share this signal that's coming from your uh, audio video receiver your sound source and it would allow this to come out so you have a low level going in from the receiver and it's coming right back out of the amplifier itself so on the inside of this it has on its logic board it has the um, the capability to send that signal right back out to another amplifier which is what I've done down here so let's go down here very quick and as you guys can see you would only need the input of this okay and depending on how many of these things you have you can just keep on daisy chaining them right and powering multiple subwoofers now just to be honest with you guys this is not completely necessary each of these subwoofers do not need their own amplifier they don't they sound they sounded just fine when I had them running these are by the way these are single voice call subwoofers at four ohms each of them are four ohms this amplifier is stable at eight ohms and at four ohms and what I had at first was these two wired in series together and to be honest with you they sound damn good now they sound damn good now the way that they are but I think they sounded even better at, a, at an 8 ohm load I don't know why but I think they sounded better at an 8, long, at an eight ohm load I'm not talking about that I'm not saying that they were more powerful because to be honest with you the way that they're strapped now the daisy chain them having their individual uh, amplifier they sound like they put out more power now than what they did when you know I had them strapped with eight to eight ohms of course that's less current draw with an eight ohm load than what it is with a four ohm load so that's kind of like common sense would tell you yeah it's not receiving as much power so if you daisy chain them like this where it's only a four ohm load per amplifier then yeah it's going to be more powerful but the thing is this it didn't have any issues powering the uh, the subwoofers at an 8 ohm load so basically the same amount the same particularly the same force right it, at a force it had the same impact it had the same impression as far as like it being able to deliver power at 8 ohms as well that's why I said I'm impressed by these these amplifiers because at their 8 ohm load they are putting out a whole lot of power as a matter of fact I may need to double check I think the TS parameters that they gave us on Parse Express about this amplifier may have been tested at an 8 ohm load sometimes they'll do that they'll, they'll give you the uh, power rating and all the TS parameters in respect to it being at a specific ohm uh, rating so it may have actually been at 8 ohms as far as it being um, um, rated at 250 watts and all that right and then it's a by being a home audio uh, amplifier as well 8, eight ohm uh, 8 ohm load is like standard you know but enough of that I just wanted to show you guys that this thing is strappable and they sound damn good uh, the way that they are now but it's not necessary with speakers this small now if you have like you know some 12s or some 15s some 18s things of that nature then of course you may want to you may want to resort to some 
to, to, uh, to something like this, but it's not necessary with eight inch speakers. It's, it's just not, even though they are rated at 250 or something along that nature in the neighborhood of 250, 300 Watts is what the woofers are rated for. But, uh, and even though this is what the subwoofers are rated, I mean, the amplifier is rated for, so they match is not necessary. It, it, it powered them just fine at eight ohms. Now the four ohm load, I can say with the four ohm load and them being paired individually like this, I did have to turn the gains down on here because it was just delivering a little bit too much power and it actually made these speakers pop. This amplifier did. This ampl these amps are pretty impressive, you know, for the price point and for what they're rated at. They say 250. I think that's at an 8 ohm low. I don't want to say that's, that's definite because I don't have the uh, website in front of me right now. But uh, pretty freaking impressive to me. I like them. Now the 4 ohm load, I think they'll push. I do have a 212 inch uh, um, woofers here in, in house and I do think that they'll do pretty well. As a matter of fact, I still have those Dayton Audio uh, low profile subwoofers. I think I can have an upcoming video for you guys with that as well. But for right now, just let me get this thing powered on and uh, just give you guys a, a, a sense of how this works. So one of the features on the amplifier as well that I, I don't know if I, I would mention this or not is that they do have an audio a auto power on and an auto off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me let me rephrase that. If you look at the power button right here, right here, you can you can put it on. In the middle, it's auto on, meaning that it won't turn on unless it's, it signals a source. And then you have the off button right there. I have both of these set to auto on, meaning that they will not come on until they're actually triggered, until they get a a, a sound source from you know the input right here if they don't sense this then it stay off at all times and that's how I have it so um, that's how that's how it is I'm going to try to send it a source here in a minute and see if I can get some juice I see if I can just get on camera them two coming on at the same time it's a little green light that you guys will see and it will come on at the same time as a matter of fact my little Roku I thought I already had it connected but I don't so let me connect my Roku the um, the uh, receiver also has an auto on function that when it senses the uh, inputs it, it comes on automatic as well okay so nothing came on then great so let me set this down right quick and I'll be right back This thing is pretty is pretty cool, man. I like it because everything comes on automatically. I don't have to sit back and babysit a whole bunch of remotes and stuff, and that's pretty cool. I'm gonna bag up a bit. Sorry for the shaky video, folks. But I didn't. I just. I'm. I literally. I'm literally doing this off the cuff. I didn't even plan on doing a video. I. Um, I was trying to get my my screen straight here. As you guys can see, I got a new screen up here. I had it painted. On the wall, which worked just fine, but my wall is textured. So with it being a textured wall, of course, it degrades the uh, video quality, the image. So I made a frame. That's my center channel. Over here is like my left and right. That's my front stage. But it's not about the speakers or this. <laughs> it's not about the speakers or my my uh, screen right now. But that's what I'm talking about. This is what I was doing, trying to get this thing centered. And I thought about. It. I said, "What well, I haven't showed the guys." Uh, the strapping functionality or capabilities of the SPA 250. So let me let me show them the 250 strapping capabilities. But enough of that. I'm gonna try to get the Sony turned on. This is my remote for my Sony. The Sony is right here. The Roku is over here. It's just not getting powered up. But I'm gonna hit power on here, and it may it may actually turn on everything. The uh, projector behind me is gonna come on. The uh, AV receiver is gonna come on. And of course, the Sony is going to come on as well. It's supposed to come on if everything is connected. So let me just hit power for you guys. Okay, it's the AV receiver. That's the uh, projector. And the, the, uh, the amplifiers are not going to be triggered 
you're going to see a little green light on them until there's some actual sound coming being being uh <clears throat> until there's some actual sound coming through them well not 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 i mean coming through them so i can't say just me playing sound it actually have to be um you know a low frequency because I, I do have it crossed over here um on the receiver whereas it only gives them specific frequencies so if that frequency is not uh uh detected it won't come on at all so let me see if i can um i don't know i canceled my netflix account so we don't have that uh let me see i may have to get my my roku going on because none of my I, I I don't I don't have any of my music stuff tied to any of this, so yeah, you know what? I got a USB in my pocket, sure do. Look at that! I got a USB. I was in I was in my car earlier and I was playing some music. Let's get some of this going. But then again, this is going to get me copyrighted. Let me get some YouTube. I'm gonna stream some YouTube to this. Give me a, give me a second, fellas. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Yeah, find my phone. All right, guys, I got my phone. And I'm gonna show you guys something else that's pretty cool about this that, that that I didn't even know until like a few months ago, right? So I'm gonna show you guys something on my phone right quick. Uh, no, I can't show you a text from my wife. <laughs> the Pioneer actually comes with its own little application, so that is pretty cool. I don't ever I don't ever even have to leave the uh, the couch to actually control this thing. My whole system is on an app. So if I go to Streambox, that should wake up my Roku. See there? And there's a lot of light coming in here. So if you guys are wondering why the screen looks like that, it's because of that. But anyway, so I'm going to go to my... Uh, but this is the funny part. The Roku has to have its own remote. It does, it does not control my, my Roku. However, the Roku does have its own app. So wait a minute. And I go back to my home screen here, and there it is. The Roku has its own little app, so I can get this pulled up. No, I don't want to rate you right now, bro. Go to remote. All right, these Roku, that is it. So I'm going to go home and watch this, and there it is. Now I can go to me some uh, some YouTube. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna go to my phone here, and I'm gonna go to YouTube. Give me a minute. Uh, YouTube, and I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go try to stream some uh, royalty free music. That to keep us out of trouble, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. If I can get this going, where are we? Okay. <clears throat> royalty free music all right there we go boom and this is one of the ones I, I actually played on a demo not not long ago right this is the exact one so what I'm gonna do is Cast this. Wow, my internet is acting weird today. It's kind of weird. Oh, I know. I gotta be on the same. I gotta be on the same uh, Wi-Fi as the as the local. Let me check that out. Let me try that. All right, music. Yeah, for some reason it's acting a little bit weird. Let me change my Wi-Fi setting. My Wi-Fi settings have to be on the same Wi-Fi as the uh, the Roku stick, and I do have a couple couple different um, routers in my home. So 
I'm going to go to the same router in which the Roku is on and get back at it. Alright, connected. Let's go back. And sorry this is taking so long, guys. It shouldn't take this long. Okay, so we have D's Roku is what I want to go to. And there it is. <clears throat> sorry about that, guys. I should have had all this set up beforehand. But like I said, this is kind of like a freestyle. I did not even, you know plan to be making a video right now but it's okay and there it is all right let's let's get this going all right so I gotta turn up the volume to turn up the volume all I have to do here is go to um, go back to the pioneer amp and just adjust the volume from here And it should. Did you see the lights come on? Oh, only one came on. Wait a minute. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Only one amplifier came on. Hold on, guys. Let me let me pause this. Only one amplifier came on. That's weird. I gotta figure out what's going on here. That's on auto. That came on. This one over here didn't come on though. What's going on? Oh, it's set to off. Who did that? So put it on auto. Okay, as you can see, it's on auto right now, but it's still not coming on because no sound is coming through, right? But if I hit play here, it should come on. Let's see if I can get both on the, on, the, on camera. You see that? Came on automatically. And that's how they work. That's how the strapping feature work on the SPA 250. Pretty cool shit, huh? And excuse the mess, guys. Like I said, I'm in the middle of a of a build here. I got my MDF here, and I got some more MDF here. That that is gonna be made into a shelf for my little setup right here. All my electronics and these wires and stuff are gonna be zip tied and hid. You're not gonna be able to see that because right now the amplifiers are facing us to the front but that's actually the rear of the setup that, those things are going to be facing the wall so you're not going to see all that at all it's going to be behind it's actually going to be in the back of these boxes here right you're not going to see them because they're going to be they will play amplifiers attached to the back of these boxes and the wires are going to be running along the floorboard right there with a, with a cover on it so you're not going to be able to see any of that stuff it's going to be a pretty clean a pretty clean setup uh, that's another upcoming project that i have as well uh, for right now that is it I just wanted to share that with you guys to see whether or not you knew it and if not to show it to you and maybe you guys will be in the, in the, in the uh, market to get you a couple of these pretty cool amplifiers but till then I'm just what I'm gonna do I'm gonna give you guys a little sound test of my setup and I know this thing is gonna be doing more distorting than anything but hey it's, it's for the fun right I'm gonna do it anyway so let me get the volume turned up Get the volume turned up for you guys. Right? I'm going to bag it up a little bit. Let's bag that up. And see if I can get the... Um
right, guys, that's it. That's that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys uh, for right now. Oh, snap, I didn't get no flex. I know somebody going to want to see some flex. Let me give you guys some flex. My bad. My bad. I'm going to let it play just a little bit more. And right now, the volume is set at negative 12. Uh, so I'm going to get it get it going again and, and see if I can get the woofers uh, on on video moving a little bit. I I already know if I don't, if I don't show the subwoofer, somebody gonna beat me up in the comments. So let me so let me avoid those 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 crazy comments and give you guys a little bit of flex. I'm gonna hit play just a little bit more, man. Alright guys, that's enough of that. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a proper demo of this whenever I get everything finished. As you guys can see, the subwoofers, they still have caulking and everything out on the outside of it. Actually, that's not caulking. That, that is actually something, uh, these are some dry, it's some drywall uh, mud, putty. I forget exactly what they call it. I think they call it uh, uh, carpenter's mud or something. But it's made for patching drywall. Uh, uh, so what ended up happening, I did knock a hole in my, <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you what happened, but it was a big hole got knocked in my wall and I had to uh, patch it up and I seen the prices of the little smaller containers and then I seen the prices of the five gallon buckets and I was like, well hell, I might as well just get a five gallon bucket and then it hit, it, it hit me when I got home that I said, man, I can seal some boxes up with this. So that's what I've been been using it for. And it works pretty good. The sanding is very, very messy, though. It's worse than MDF, to be honest with you. Uh, I think just, just getting you a lot of glue and watering your glue down and painting it seals the MDF a lot more uh, cleanly than what this, this stuff right here do. This stuff, sanding this stuff right here, is worse than actually sanding MDF. And I thought I'd never hear myself say that anything was worse than sanding MDF, but that stuff is pretty nasty right there. It gets the job done. I like it, but uh, yeah, very messy job. But enough of me rambling. That's it for right now. If you guys like the video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, you already know what to do. For all my new, my new guys watching the video, don't forget to like. Click the notification bell once you subscribe. And until next time, it's your boy D, and I'm out.